After the death of Charles VI, Maria Theresa, his daughter, ascended the throne. The Habsburg monarchy was originally subject to Salic law, which excluded women from inheritance. The pragmatic sanction, however, allowed Maria to become successor. This became a European issue that started the Austrian War of Succession. Frederick II, King of Prussia managed to strike first, launching an attack on Silesia, a rich region of Central Europe, in mid-December 1740. The Prussian army under Kurt Christoph Graf von Schwerin invaded Silesia and met the Austrian army under Wilhelm Reinhard von Nieperg at Molwitz, which would become Frederick's first battle. The Prussian army had massed quietly along the Uda during early December 1740, and on 16 December, without a declaration of war, Frederick moved his troops across the frontier into Silesia. The Prussian force consisted of two corps totaling 27,000 soldiers, while Silesia was defended by an Austrian garrison of only 8,000 men. The Austrians were able to offer only light resistance and garrison a few fortresses. The Prussians swept through the province, taking control of the capital at Breslau without a fight on January 2, 1741. The fortress at Olau was also taken without resistance on 9 January, after which the Prussians used it for their winter quarters. By the end of January 1741, almost the entirety of Silesia had come under Prussian control, and the remaining Austrian strongholds of Glogau, Brieg and Nysa were besieged. After leaving winter quarters in early 1741, the Prussian forces began a spring campaign, and on 9 March Prince Leopold II of Anhalt Dessau took Glogau by storm. In late March, an Austrian force of around 20,000 under the command of Wilhelm Reinhard von Nieper crossed the Sudetes Mountains from Moravia and broke the siege of Nysa. On 5 April, Nieper's army caught Frederick II completely off guard as he lingered in the province and surged northwards past Frederick and his army to relieve the city of Nysa, which was being besieged by a small Prussian force and had not yet fallen. Both Nieperg and Frederick rushed northwards in parallel columns in a race to reach the city first. In atrocious weather, Nieperg reached Nysa first and set up camp there. Frederick and his entire army were now caught behind enemy lines. With a large Austrian force lying between him and the rest of his kingdom, and his supply and communication lines cut off, both sides knew that battle was now inevitable. Captured Austrian soldiers told Frederick the exact position of Nyperg's forces at Molwitz, and the morning fog and snow allowed Frederick's army to advance undetected to within 2,000 paces of Nyperg's camp. Most commanders would then have given the order to charge the camp and rout the Austrian army, but since Frederick had never fought a campaign or a battle before, he instead decided to deploy his army in a battle line. There was very heavy snow on the ground, which caused snow blindness, and Frederick miscalculated the distance to the river on his right. He deployed several of his units behind a bend in the river where they could take no part in the battle, and several more units were deployed perpendicular to his two battle lines on the right flank. It is said that Schwerin commented early on that Frederick miscalculated the distance. Nieperg was unprepared for battle when he discovered Frederick's entire army was approaching. Not only were Austrian troops still in bivouac and cooking food, but they were scattered across three villages, with their front facing away from the Prussian advance. Had the Prussians attacked at this time, they would have encountered only disorganized resistance. Because of the two-hour delay caused by Frederick dressing his battle lines, the Austrian army had the opportunity to concentrate its forces and form a battle line. By the time, the forces engaged one another just before p.m. At the beginning of the battle, the Prussians had the larger army. They also had three times the field guns than the Austrians had. However, the Austrian cavalry outnumbered the Prussian cavalry two to one. The Prussian forces advanced toward the Austrians into lines, while the Prussian artillery began bombarding the Austrian line. Six regiments of Austrian cavalry on the extreme left flank of the Austrian line, numbering 4,500 to 5,000 men and horses, were goaded by the Prussian bombardment to charge the Prussian right flank without orders from Nieperg. 
The charge shattered the Prussian cavalry, who received the attack while at a full halt. Frederick was with the Prussian cavalry and was caught up in its route. This left the Prussian flank open to attack, and the Austrian cavalry then turned on the unprotected infantry. Schwerin, the Prussian military commander under Frederick, now advised the king to leave the battlefield because it looked as though the Prussian army was about to be defeated. Frederick heeded this warning. Abandoning the field, he was nearly caught and almost shot. Frederick's absence allowed Schwerin, a veteran general, to take command of the troops himself. At this point of the battle, the scene was chaotic. Having scattered the Prussian cavalry, the Austrian cavalry continued its attack on the Prussian infantry. They charged the infantry repeatedly. The firing of Prussian soldiers from the second line, who were trying to stop the Austrians, was also killing Prussian soldiers in the first line. When asked whether the Prussians would retreat, Schwerin answered over enemy bodies. In fact, the Prussian infantry, which had been rigorously drilled and trained under Frederick William I, held firm and continued firing rapid volleys into the Austrian cavalry, causing it tremendous losses and killing its commander, General Roma. After the repulse of the Austrian cavalry, Schwerin reformed the infantry and ordered infantry units that were short on ammunition to strip the dead of theirs. He then ordered the right flank of the Prussian infantry to advance toward the Austrian infantry line, with the left flank receiving the order to advance a few minutes later. This resulted in an oblique order attack on the Austrian infantry line, with the right flank of the Prussians overlapping the left flank of the Austrians. In addition, the Prussian infantry's use of the recently invented iron ramrod allowed them to fire four to five shots a minute with their flintlock muskets, which was three times more rapid than any other European army at the time. This combination of discipline and firepower quickly overwhelmed the Austrian infantry, which consisted of a large number of raw recruits lacking the training of the Prussian infantry. Soon, the Austrian line collapsed from left to right, and the Austrian army was rooted from the field. In the end, the Prussians won a close victory against a numerically inferior enemy due to the leadership of Field Marshal Schwerin and the superior training of the Prussian infantry. After the battle, the Austrian army was not pursued and remained intact. Nieperg retreated to Nysa, remaining in Silesia to await reinforcements. Frederick returned to his army the morning after the battle, restored his lines of communication, and subsequently brought the siege of Brieg to a successful conclusion. After the battle, Frederick censured himself for his mistakes and learned from them, writing later that Molwitz educated him and his army. The battle showed that Frederick could depend on the superior training of the Prussian infantry in a battle, which had proven itself able to withstand the charge of Austrian cavalry. Realizing that the cavalry would have to be reformed to be able to hold its own against the excellently trained Austrian cavalry, he soon instituted a training program to discipline the Prussian cavalry in coordinated action and precision that would increase its effectiveness in both reconnaissance and battle. Molwitz also illustrated the effectiveness of the oblique order, a tactic Frederick would use in most of his later major battles. In spite of the fact that the battle had been a near disaster for Frederick and was not won through his direct command, the victory raised his prestige in Europe by demonstrating that Frederick was capable of challenging the Habsburgs and emerging victorious. The Prussian victory also made it clear to Maria Theresa that she would not be able to reassert her control of Silesia easily, and that Prussia was a military power that would have to be more carefully reckoned with. After Austria's failure at Molwitz to repel the Prussian invasion, other powers were emboldened to attack the beleaguered monarchy, widening the conflict into what would become the War of the Austrian Succession. France declared its support for Prussia's seizure of Silesia in the 5 June Treaty of Breslau, and in July joined in the Treaty of Nymphenburg by which France and Spain committed to support Bavaria's territorial claims against Austria. French forces began crossing the Rhine on 15 August, joining the Bavarian forces on the Danube and advancing toward Vienna, while a Spanish Neapolitan army attacked Austria's holdings in northern Italy. Saxony, formerly an Austrian ally, now joined the French alliance, and Britain declared itself neutral to prevent French or Prussian attacks on Hanover. Faced with the prospect of a total partition of her realm, Maria Theresa worked through the following months to regroup and prepare a counter-attack. 
On 25 June, she received her formal coronation as Queen of Hungary in Pressburg and began trying to recruit a new army from her eastern lands. In August, she offered Frederick concessions in the Low Countries and a cash payment if Prussia would evacuate Silesia, though she was immediately rebuffed. Meanwhile, fresh enemies attacked Austria on multiple fronts. The Franco-Bavarian force seized Linz on 14 September and advanced through Upper Austria, reaching the vicinity of Vienna by October, while Bohemia was simultaneously invaded by the Saxons. Seeing Austria's distress, Frederick opened secret peace negotiations with Nieperg in Breslau, even as he continued to publicly support the League of Nymphenburg. Although Prussia was allied with the French, the idea of France or Bavaria becoming the dominant power in Germany through Austria's destruction did not appeal to Frederick. With British urging and mediation, on 9 October Austria and Prussia agreed to a secret armistice known as the Convention of Klein Schnellendorf, under which both belligerents would cease hostilities in Silesia though maintaining their appearance, and Austria would eventually concede Laos Silesia in return for a final peace to be negotiated before the end of the year. Nyperg's Austrian forces were then recalled from Silesia to defend Austria against the Western invaders, abandoning Nysa after a sham siege in early November and leaving the whole of Silesia under Prussian control.